In this short video we'll be discussing color models. Now there are different color models that you can use as your working space within Photoshop or as a profile that you embed when you save your work. Now that can be sRGB or Adobe RGB or Profoto or whatever profile you prefer to use. You can use all of them and none of them are bad, none of them are best, but they are different and it's good to understand the difference between them and to illustrate the differences I'm going to use a little tool here which is this one and that is the color think tool it's not a tool I'd recommend for you to buy because it's more a tool to explain and explore profiles than it is for you to use on a daily basis but for me it's very nice to be able to compare uh, different profiles so let us select the sRGB standard viewed in two dimensions. So I'm looking at the luminance axis um, straight into the screen and I'm viewing only the A and B colors here. So if I switch to three dimensions, three, three dimensions, you can see that it is a three-dimensional model. I can rotate it if you like. And you can see it has all the colors in A and B. So here's my A axis, my B axis, and my luminance axis is right here going vertical. Back to two dimensions because it's hard to compare things in three dimensions. If I then click on my Adobe RGB, you can see that indeed Adobe RGB's color gamut is much bigger than what I get in sRGB. So it is true, Adobe RGB gives you a bigger color range. It allows you to have colors within your file that are actually more vivid, especially in the green colors that you can ever get with an sRGB profile. So that's true. But you have to be able to reproduce those colors. And if you are going to reproduce those colors on print, you're not going to get the color that is possible within your Adobe RGB range. Because if I just switch on a very plain newspaper color range, you see that with sRGB you have a lot more color than you could ever get with the um, newspaper. So um, I don't need much more to do newspaper soft proofing than an sRGB range uh, on my display because I can easily see all the colors that can be printed on uh, newspaper print. Of course newspaper print is the worst paper out there. Let me switch off the sRGB and Adobe RGB and compare the newspaper print to for instance an ISO coded or a swap. You can see that the ISO coded is the biggest one of the three and um, the uh, difference is also very noticeable if you switch to three dimensions. You can see that the biggest one now goes to fairly high range of luminance and a fairly low range of luminance in the dark areas. If I make the biggest one sort of swap I switch off and I will now make the coded one slightly transparent. And there you see the newspaper model uh, range um, within the uh, ISO coded range. So you can see that there is a lot more color range to the ISO coded paper. Now if I switch on my sRGB with that as well, you can see that I can't see much of my um, um, ISO coded profile except for in the blue-green areas. Uh, really saturated colors there. And notice that it's visible, it's possible to get the same AB values but not at the same luminance level. So you'd be emitting more light so it wouldn't be the same color as perception but it'd be just as blue or green, be just lighter in luminance. So it's not exactly possible to get the entire range on sARGB using ISO coded. Let's go back to two dimensions and try if we can see that here too. So this chart here is the ISO coded and this is the chart we just chose as a screen as RGB. Now if we go to Adobe RGB we do have the entire range of ISO coded that we can range except uh, that we can uh, achieve except for the black because the black color within both sRGB and Adobe RGB uh, assume that you can generate pure black and that uh, pure black is never achievable with any 
device. So uh, whenever a manufacturer claims they have full capabilities of displaying Adobe RGB or even sRGB, they are not in essence telling you the truth. Because if you look at a three-dimensional view and you switch this on your sRGB profile, you can see that it goes down to the very zero point of luminance. And I can guarantee you there is no media out there that will allow you to get a black that has luminance value zero. It does not exist. There will always be some reflection of light and therefore always be a luminance value that's higher than zero. It doesn't matter how great your paper, how great your press, how great your inkjet printer, it doesn't matter. Even on a really good inkjet printer with lots of color, you can see that the blackest black I can get from that is actually a much higher value than zero. You see there's a difference here. So you can never achieve the entire sRGB or Adobe RGB range uh, on any display in the black areas. But mostly we concentrate on the color range. So on a really good paper I can print part of sRGB, not all of our sRGB. And this is quite a good photo printer. If you compare it to the ISO coded, it is much bigger in any color than um, what I can get with that. So just switch not to make it too confusing. The more square one is the ISO coded. I can easily match all of those colors within my um, photo printer with a good photo paper, but as soon as I start to compare it to Adobe RGB, I'm lost. I, there's a lot of colors I can never print. So using Adobe RGB to save your work in, it's not impossible, of course, but it is risky because you will be using colors that you can never print. Guaranteed, you will never be able to print the colors if they are within the boundaries outside the range, so here, of your output device. So if you're going to print and use Adobe RGB for export, you can expect to get different results than on screen, because the screen is capable of showing you, because if I switch on just my Adobe RGB and then switch off my printer and just switch on the profile of this display, I can see pretty much of the colors within Adobe RGB. I can see them on this display, but I can never print them because if I look at the color range that I have in my printer, I have a pretty big area of colors that I can never print. If I stick to sRGB for my output instead of Adobe RGB, then it becomes a lot easier. Let me just switch off the monitor here because there you see that most of the colors I now have are within range of my printer. Still not all of them because there are still colors in my sRGB range that are not printable. So no matter which standard you choose there will be colors that are outside the range in print. It's unavoidable. So my choice would be to use sRGB unless your work has extreme green colors or green blue colors that actually will give you more color on a printout than sRGB would. It is safer to stay within sRGB when you export your work than it is to go to Adobe RGB. Of course the color range is bigger on Adobe RGB, but what are you going to do with colors that you can never reproduce except on your screen? Um, to me it doesn't make sense if you go to print to export in Adobe RGB. You get more predictable results in most cases using sRGB. And the reason for that being is that you have only um, a limited amount of values in your file. I mean the RGB values, if, if it's an 8-bit file, range from 0 to 255. And that 255 color will actually mean in Adobe RGB a uh, much more saturated color than an sRGB. So if you move a couple of steps down it will be much bigger steps in Adobe RGB than it is in sRGB look at the difference between Adobe RGB and sRGB. If I get this color by sending to my uh, display 255 green, I get only this color in sRGB and in my print 
I can only get this color. So actually I need to translate the color a lot more, compress it a lot more if I'm using Adobe RGB than I'm using sRGB. The closer you stay to the range that you will be working in, the less expansion or contraction the profiling will have to do. And if you stay closer to the original color, it's easier to match the colors. Uh, you can also look at it in a different way. If I want to travel, um, I could take a world map with, you, with me. That would mean I have a, a map for any place I go. But if I know I'm going to be driving, it is not very smart to take a world map because I will never be able to cross the continents anyway. So I don't need that big a space on my map. I would have more use having a map that actually match where I'm going. If I have a map of Europe and I'm staying within Europe, I'm much better off than using a world map. If I stay in my own country, I'm better off with a national map. So just look at what you will be doing in your workflow and then decide what color space you want to use. If you want to achieve the highest possible color gamut, use Adobe RGB because you will get colors in there that are printable that wouldn't be printable with sRGB. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't use Adobe RGB, I use Pro. Sounds really professional. Pro Photo. Well, let me switch off the printer profile and switch on the Pro Photo. Now you can see that's pretty big. The Pro Photo um, area is basically the entire LAB space, minus a few points. That makes no sense to use in an output because you can never reproduce that on any device. It doesn't exist. It's a theoretical color range. And if you look at it in three dimensions, it's even worse because you, you see that it's, it's got everything. It's got all the colors. But, but defining those colors still means you have to use values between 0 and 255. So one change in value will make a huge difference in color if you stay in Profoto. Whereas if you stay in Adobe RGB, that step is much smaller. Because switch off, and then you see Adobe RGB. And switch off Adobe, and you see sRGB. So my whole point is, Profoto is great to work in if you're just converting colors and want to, to not uh, limit your color range. Because you, you can have bigger colors in Profoto than you can have in any other color space. Um, but any output in Profoto is completely nonsense. Um, one might argue that output in Adobe RGB in most print cases is nonsense as well. If you go into a newspaper and supply your files in Adobe RGB, it's nonsense as well because you'll be supplying much more color than is printable on the newspaper paper. So that's maybe some insight on how profiles can be uh, compared, how choices on which color space you use can have an effect on what colors actually do in your files. Um, if you have any questions on this or you don't agree with me, that's also possible, uh, feel free to comment on the site and uh, I hope this gave you some information that you can use in a real life situation. Thanks for watching.